Welcome once again to the Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. A couple of days ago, the Nigerian government, of course, through the president's uh, spokespersons, had made mention of plans to rid the country of insurgency by 2023. We've also shared stories on the 12 Super Tucano jets and how those, of course, will come into play very soon in the fight against insurgency. But while we have those conversations, we still, of course, are dealing with kidnappings and killings and, and abductions, you know, in, in uh, different parts of the country. Uh, Nigeria's security system is still being questioned and its ability to truly uh, keep Nigerians and their properties safe. Earlier this morning, we also shared stories of extortion, you know, by Nigerian police officers um, in Abuja and in Enugu. And these, of course, are not one-off uh, stories. They are, you know, amongst the many other stories that we hear of every other day that basically paint a picture of what the Nigerian police force um, currently is and has always been. We're going to be taking a look at Nigeria's security system and uh, the look, well, the outlook for 2022. Um, how far have we come and what more uh, must be done? Uh, we're speaking this morning with uh, security expert, uh, Mr. Yahoo Zagetso. Good morning. Thanks for joining us, Mr. Zagetso. Uh, Mr. Zagetso, if you can hear us clearly, good morning to you. Yes, of course. I can hear you loud and clear. All right, great. Uh, thanks for joining us. And also, Chidi Omeje, uh, thanks also for being a part of the conversation. Thank you for having me and compliments of the season. All right. Um, I'm going to start with, with uh, Mr. Getso. Um, what would you describe as your own analysis with moves that the Nigerian government has made in the last couple of years, mostly in 2021, um, with regards beefing up Nigeria's security architecture and, of course, giving, off, uh, giving us some hope with regards to next year, uh, have we done in any way better um, this year? Well, um, first of all, looking at uh, the 2021, is the year that the uh, Nigerian government under Buhari's watch exhibit incompetency, incapability, inability, lack of commitment, lack of interest, poor uh, disappointment, disgrace, and uh, uh, <coughs> diplomatic, local, and international disgrace. Uh, it is obvious that Buhari government have failed Nigerians, woefully. So uh, as far as we are concerned, there is nothing to write home about. All those Tucano and whatever uh, investment and inputs made into the security have been lambasted and abused, and at the same time uh, explained and described as a failure by the members of the cabinet or by the members of the uh, the kitchen cabinet of the Muhammad Buhari administration. Let me take you back to what Lilai Mohammed has been talking about uh, right since before the government uh, became two years old, that uh, they know the finances and sponsors of Boko Haram. And um, uh, the later time in the years of 2017, 2018, uh, and um, to some extent in 2019, he made a pronouncement once again that they know the finances and the sponsors of the uh, uh, banditry and other activities of the criminals happening all over the country. But to our dismay and uh, to our disappointment, if at all you know who are these people, as you have been mentioning, what we expected to see in practice is demonstration or a kind of transmission or translation of your promises, empty promises be made uh, that convinced, you convinced Nigerians to have voted you into power in the year 2015, that you are going to secure the country, that you are going to provide job opportunities, that you are going to address as many as possible issues. But yet, the scope of the security, the situation became worse than what it was before you came into government. Well, now, Mr. Gato, uh, Mr. Gato I, I, I just want to quickly step in I'm here. The coming, president... I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming please. Yeah, I just, uh, second, you will go on, but I want, to, I want to add this. Oh, can you hold on, Mr. Gato? Can you hold on? Okay. The president has said that if Nigerians are sincere, they will you know, be able to see that things are a lot better than they were when they came into office in 2015. Um, so well, how do you then say telling. that things are worse? That, that is a storytelling, but that is uh, there is no sincerity, or there is no iota, any water of uh, sincerity in that. There is no honesty in that. 
He hasn't demonstrated. <clears throat> you know, Nigerians don't want to hear the story from Buhari's mouth. They want to see it in his actions. They want to see it in his uh, in his uh, uh, governance. They want to see it on, in practice. They want to see the demonstration and the practical reality on ground, not just the storytelling. Remember that we have so many, so many things related, uh, uh, credited to the National Security Advisor, to the Minister of Defense, to the Minister of Information, and to other ministers. And we have not seen any body language of Muhammad Buhari administration, not even a physical and practical language that Buhari is really a serious. The government have exhibited themselves as a, 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 a kind of a, a, a uncapable government, a, a kind of um, exhibited uh, inability in incapability and at the same time demonstrated to Nigerians that is the most highest light, uh, liar, li lies government that we ever had in the history of Nigeria. It's sad and this dis disgrace. Okay, um, um, Chidi, let's also bring in Chidi Omeje. Um, now, one of the major responses from the federal government as regards uh, the fight against in, insurgency or, or with the insecurity issues in the country is the change of service chiefs. Now, uh, four months after that change actually happened, we had a major attack in Kaduna where you had a Tahiru, uh, so one of the uh, chief of staff and several uh, prominent military personnel lost their lives and all of that. Uh, how would you describe, you know, uh, would you say that the change of service chief has actually um, contributed to the fight against insurgency so far for us in 2021? Okay. Um, uh, did you say that uh, the chief of army staff lost his life through an attack? Excuse me? I don't know if I got it. Did you just say that the chief of the late chief of Amistad died through an attack? Ibrahim uh, uh, Atahiru. That he, that, that he died through an attack. What attack? No, no, attack? there was an attack that affected some of the, uh, yeah, you not, know, not prominent... The, not the army staff here, chief of army staff. But go on, I, I go on, Mr. Major. I think, you know, I, I, I think we're mixing up... Well, in any case, um, uh, if I get the, the, the entire meat of your question, uh, you're asking whether the change of service chiefs uh, added any, any kind of uh, impetus to the fight against... Uh, uh, terrorism, insurgency, and of course, battle against banditry. Um, uh, we have to take it from this context. Don't, don't forget that before they were before they were brought in, the new ones, uh, there was a, a large, there was a wide uh, demand, outcry from Nigerians, asking that uh, you know the, the previous set of subjects be changed, so that we we'll see if there will be a new list of life in terms of uh, how. Uh, the, the war or the battle has been prosecuted. And that uh, after Dili Dali, the government eventually, you know, yielded to Nigerians demand. And we got those new set of chiefs. And uh, of course, we saw that there was uh, some kind of, uh, you know, um, uh, how would I put it now? You, you saw uh, some kind of energy, you know, brought in fresh idea, brought in fresh, you know, there was a, a huge expectation. Then of course we lost the chief of army, the the gallant looking um, late chief of army staff Atahiru, Atahiru, uh, Ibrahim Atahiru, through uh, the unfortunate air crash, air crash yeah. not any attack. Okay, right. So now <clears throat> the question, the, the point here is this: we have not gotten to the point where we expected, in spite of the, the change. But it's not entirely the fault of the new service chiefs. It is exactly, the problem is actually uh, a very faulty internal security operations mechanism. Very faulty. How, how do I mean? <clears throat> Ordinarily, what we ought to have in this country is a situation where you have what we call first responders and last responders. First responders, um, the lead agents actually ought to have been the Nigerian police to be able to you know, because they are everywhere, they should be able to have intelligence on ground, have boots on ground, have cooperation with the civil society to be able to nip these things on the board. Then you have to have them also to deal with the situation. But if it comes to a stage where it is beyond their capacity, their capability to deal with, that is where you invite the military. What obtains now, because you have a very faulty internal security operation mechanism, is that you see that the police ought to be the first, the lead agencies ought to be the first responders 
and are now relaxed back. So the last responder of that is military have now become the first responder. So that every situation you have, you see the military being drafted in. You see, you see Nigerians expecting the military to take charge. Not, not forget, forgetting rather that these military guys were not actually trained to handle a lot of civil related issues. But we have even gone beyond that because the, the kind of security situation we have now is even such that um, if you don't have what we call synergy of action between and among the military and the security agencies, you know, you don't expect, even the police couldn't, cannot at, at this stage handle it. I'm talking about at the initial time, <clears throat> at this stage when this is coming up. But right now we have the situation have gone beyond that. Of course, have gone beyond the police, as as you know, you and I know. So, but you see, we ought to show respect to the military. You know why I say that? I say that because you have a military that is not even up to combined. I'm talking about the Nigerian Armed Forces, not even the army. All of them are not even up to 600,000 in terms of numerical strength. But you see them taking up insurgency in the Northeast, uh, insurgency and terrorism in the Northeast, banditry, heavy banditry in the North, Northwest and the North Central. You have the separatist agitation in the Southeast. You have the nationalist uh, people in the, you know, uh, the in the, in, the, in the southwest, you have the attacks on marital assets in the south south. So there are a lot of issues that the military are dealing with at the same time. So what I'm trying to say is that, yes, just like my brother who spoke first, you know, I can understand his uh, angst, I can understand his emotion and sentiment. And of course, that is what Nigerians are feeling right now. A lot of Nigerians are so dissatisfied with the situation because you can't afford to have a country where you do not can't sleep and you know with your eyes more eye open, uh, closed. So it is a difficult situation for Nigerians and it's a it's been it's been horrible. And then so um, back back to your question again. Yes, to an extent the the the, the new set of service chiefs have brought in some level of some level of you know uh, re-energization, some level of momentum into the fight. Uh, they are just barely. Um, six months in office, uh, so we don't expect any from them, but we, all we need to do is to support them, all we need to do is to encourage them, all we need to do is to, um, you know, uh, request them to have more of synergy, you know, between and among the, the military, the security, the intelligence and response agencies in the country to be able to handle the situation. And beyond that even, we have come to the stage where, where, where the approach should be all of nation approach. What we mean by all of national approach is that at, this, at a time like this, not just all of government approach, but all of nation, whereby both the, the media, the civil society groups, the traditional rulers, the every citizen have a role to play. Because right. the issues we have, we have right now, you, it, 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 you can afford more effectively through intelligence you know, uh, uh, driven efforts. So right. how do you get intelligence? Right. Information. How do you get information? If people say something and say something. So what I'm trying to say is, we have come to a stage where um, throwing blames about may not really help us. If, have you seen what is happening in the northeast, uh, northwest? Have you seen what our people are going through there? In Sokoto, where about 40 people are born there? You know, so many things are going So Now, it's not, I don't want to just say, oh, the, you know, we are going to blame one set of people. No, we almost find a way out of this situation in order to remain as people, as a country. All right. That's my first All right. Let's bring back uh, Mr. Getsu. <laughs> Um, Mr. Getzo, do you share similar sentiments, you know, with the fact that the army needs to be commended for the efforts that they've made so far? And, of course, um, also to remember that it, it's not just, you know, the responsibility of the Nigerian army, but, you know, like Mr. Omeja has said, traditional rulers, civil society organizations, the citizens, the police, and everybody needs to work hand in hand. Uh, do you have a similar um, um, thoughts? And with the pace with which we are going and the ideas of the new service chiefs that Mr. Omeja has spoken about, do you think that we are headed in the right direction and maybe by 2023, on the next few years, we would see a complete end to the insurgency and the security challenges with devil in Nigeria? Well, uh, let's not uh, deceive ourselves. Uh, the fact of the matter is uh, we have challenges of um, the leadership. We have voted for people that deceive Nigeria. <coughs>
Mr. Gatsby? Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. Go ahead. Uh, you know, yeah. They have deceived the people within their party, that is the all, all progressive party, and they have deceived other Nigerians who are opponent. So the fact of the matter is the issue of leadership. Muhammad Buhari have demonstrate, demonstrated uh, incapability, inability, and failure of leadership quality that have been assumed, that have been assumed by Nigerians who voted and waited and escorted the vote and ensured that he is voted into the power. Uh, but I'm so so grateful that Nigerians have given Muhammad Buhari an opportunity. Otherwise, he could have considered as a saint that people will be going to worship his grave. Uh, if at all he wasn't uh, uh, elected into power. So uh, it, is, it is, you know, a kind of, it is a, a, the issue of leadership. It is when you have a good leadership, that is when you have coordination between the military, between the police, between the GSS, the civil defense, the immigration, the custom, and all other law enforcement agencies to be working with the traditional and other non-formal institutions uh, on the ground. Yes, of course, uh, Mr. Chidi had made mention very clear that uh, the police who's supposed to be at the front, uh, who's supposed to be the first respondent, now we are using we are using the back end. The police supposed to be the front end. But rather, we are using the back end, who, is the, who are the military, who are not supposed to be exposed into the civil, uh, civil crisis. But fortunately and unfortunately, because of the inability and exhibition of failure of Mohammed Buhari administration, they have made it very clear that they are not capable and they cannot be able to rule Nigeria. They are a wolf and worst failure we ever had. Even though the highest inputs as far as... And the human resources that have been, uh, the financial uh, yeah. resources have been made since independence. I keep saying it that there is no government since independence that have imputed huge amount of resources, especially financial resources, especially uh, in terms of budgeting, releasing, uh, the, releasing the money for bu uh, budgeted money, and also claim to have purchased, have a very good system of procurement uh, and uh, supply chain process and also uh, demand and other requests, and having a perfect system of retirement compared to that of Muhammad Bari, but yet there is nothing on ground. So I have the same thought that the, 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 it is the system of uh, the system failure because the government didn't come with the sincerity, there is no honesty, there is no passion, there is no patriotism. It's only proclaimed that they are going to change. To change what? What have they changed? What I expect from Nigerians is to work hard in 2022 to find a way of clearing anybody that is part of Muhammad Buhari administration, either in PDP or in APC, to ensure that we clear the system and we bring a new system so that Nigeria can move forward to the next level. Uh, I will tell you that security challenges, like I mentioned by Mr. Chidi, uh, is, is something that have, have cut across all parts of the, the nation. So what we are talking, is we are not talking about the northern part of the country. We are not talking about the Boko Haram at the northeast, the banditry in the north, central and northwest, uh, and um, the, the agitators, uh, the separatists in the, the south, south and southeast, as well as the, the national uh, nationalist movement or whatever movement you may call it, the Odua in the, north, in the southwestern part of the country. But rather we are talking about Nigeria's unity. What Muhammad Buhari uh, rewarded Nigerians, Nigerians is increasing, increasing, increasing kind of expansion of enmity, expansion of uh, ethnic uh, bigotry, expansion of regional bigotry, which will not take Nigerians anywhere. As far as I'm concerned, the level of uh, corruption also have uh, kind of vindicated the, the thought and the mindset of Nigerians and have really, um, is really making a, a huge contribution in terms of a, a kind of a, a failure of the, 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 the security as All far right. as there is no, no synergy between the police are struggling with the military, even within the police, the mobile are struggling with an ordinary police, even within the army, uh, the, the military uh, navy is... Is kind of uh, computing with the with Air Force. Air Force is computing with the Navy. You know, we are not here. We are not out of competition. It has been made very clear that even uh, in a statement credited to my recently in the interview he made in Kano, 
that the money they, they collected, uh, they, they returned from uh, those who, who, who uh, laundered money or whatever, uh, other countries like Abacha, as they claim. Uh, I'm not justifying that uh, Abacha have looted money. I don't have a business to do with that. I'm a security expert. I'm speaking purely on the issue of security. And as far as I'm concerned, that money that uh, Malami says that you have, they have used in securing the nation, what security have you provided? What have you done in the country? You have failed woefully. You better resign and leave the, the office uh, because you have not done anything. So as far as I'm concerned, yes, I'm with, with the Tachidi, and I believe that as far as there is no synergy among the security agencies, we are not going to move anywhere, and it is going to be the worst failure uh, uh, as the uh, Buhari administration uh, demonstrated demonstrated the worst right, failure Gato. as far as management and uh, of security uh, and intelligence management. All right, uh, but let's also bring in uh, Chidi Omeje. Uh, what would you say that so, uh, there's the gap? Uh, Mr. Ghetto, let's also have um, Chidi uh, share his thoughts now. What would you say is the gap uh, that you have seen in the fight against insecurity for us in 2021? Um, <clears throat> I think that, uh, you know, if you listen to uh, Yakuza, you, you want to, you tend to believe him. You will, you will like to, you will agree with him to an extent. Uh, but don't also forget that we had a sort of um, conversation when the previous government wa 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 was in place. You know, people complained how Jonathan was not uh, uh, very effective in dealing with security challenges. So it's always, it has always been there. So what I'm trying to say is that, um, but we expected more from this current president because at least he, he was a general, or he's a general, was a general, was a general. So I expected him to uh, have done a lot better. But just to put it in context, you know, um, the 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 outcry we have now was similar to what we had, you know, before this government came in. Actually, when there was an abduction in the chief of, I remember the kind of, uh, you know, how the how then government was lapooned by. Generally of Nigerians, but you know, uh, back to your question, um, the gaps. I think the, the greatest, the biggest gap we have is uh, intelligence um, asset. We've not been able to maximize and optimize our intelligence asset in, in, the, in the entire security architecture because the sort of issue, issues we have right now uh, are such that we can better dealt with if we have an effective intelligence gathering or in, you know, information sharing um, between the civilian, the, 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 the populace, and then, of course, the security agencies. Uh, so a lot of people are not keen into this effort because, um, probably because of the disenchantment, as I mentioned by my brother here, probably Nigerians are even tired of giving out information if they have ever had done that. Uh, so um, that's the greatest gap. Second gap is two of uh, synergy. Synergy. Uh, between and among these agencies have not been very effective. Uh, if I use even now that we begin to see a, a much more robust synergy, you know, among the the military, uh, you know, the services, and then of course the, the agencies. Um, so if we are able to tie, up, tie that up, and of course, more important, more important, is the, the political will to deal with this issue. You know, when uh, Yahuza, Yahuza was talking about uh, uh, Malami, uh, he, he forgot to add also the Office of National Security Advisor. You know, you know, if you remember during the Dasuki time, uh, he was much more prominent in the, this security issue, but more than this guy, current one. This current one, you know, uh, I, in fact, if you, if you ask me to rate him, I will not give him anything up to 20% in terms of performance. Because, uh, you know, he ought, that office ought to be coordinating office. It ought to be uh, the office that will coordinate this issue. Issues of intelligence, issues of synergy, issues of, you know, uh, you know, uh, Deployment and all manner of things. This office ought to be more to contribute more than they are contributing now. So I do not know why when they change the service chiefs, they returned they still retained him. I, if I, they would have, it would have been a clean sweep, so I would not have started afresh. Uh, but then it's okay. They, they are going to know better. But if you know, uh, recording I stopped. Really stopped. So I want to believe that uh, uh, from that angle, we should Ms. have been Major. In terms of value, yeah, Mr. Major. Before, of course, we bring back Yaoza again. So, as quickly as you can, if you can do it in a minute, we'll appreciate it. The things that you've mentioned, you've mentioned, you know, poor intelligence gathering, you know, synergy, and and some of all of that. In a government that is serious about fighting insurgency and fixing the security challenges in the country, do you think six years should have been enough 
to fix something as vital as intelligence gathering. Bear in mind the billions and billions of, of Naira that have been invested um, in security. Mr. Major, we're still talking about a police force that is extorting Nigerians, kidnapping Nigerians and extorting them. And that just basically shows you the, the, the rot in the soul of the most basic security agency that Nigeria should have. So shouldn't six years be enough for a government that is serious about fixing some of these things um, and fixing you know, the fight against insurgency? And I'll no matter also... how many times we try to point out those technical aspects, there's still a government in power that has spent billions and billions of Naira in six, seven years. And to also add, you know, recently the, the, the government is also saying that we know those who are sponsoring terrorists. Um, as a matter of fact, we know the organization, we know the names. So, it, I mean, I'm, I'm just wondering why, um, if that's also, you know, a function of uh, intelligence gathering as well, to say that, uh, that that's a major concern. Because if you say that you, you know the people who are actually um, funding these bandits and sponsoring them, and you also agree to the fact that you are in the know that these persons are collecting taxes. They've agreed to all of this. So what then is the issue when you have all of the bodies and um, you, know, you have the agencies? I mean, the police started with the responsibility of internal security. So uh, it, it just leaves me with a lot of question wondering if uh, intelligence gathering also is uh, a major concern. Okay, um, let me start with the, the first question. Uh, in terms of, he asked me if six years were not enough to, I thought, look, you are right there. Ordinarily, six years would be enough to see a, a very clear picture of where the government is going in terms of how you want to tackle the issue. But don't also forget that insurgency or terrorism is not something you can even stop in 20 years. In fact, in the history of uh, terrorism in the world, it's only, it's only been one place, you know, talking about Sri Lanka that you had. You know, uh, an abrupt you know, stoppage of that particular incident. Terrorism or insurgency, uh, you know, has a very long lifespan. You know, you don't just, you know, uh, remove it uh, in the, in the, in the <coughs> overnight. It's not that possible. Uh, but then, yes, ordinarily, we thought, you know, let me tell you something. We all know when this government was coming in that, uh, 2025, 2015, there was this good expectation. There was this belief that things would really be, be all right. So, but, so that, but the, the, the darling, the 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 nonchalant, the the you know the prevarication, the, all the things that they wasted time on, uh, you know, all added to what situation we're having now. So, uh, but I believe that um, yeah, it is is uh, I don't know, but I know certainly we are going to come out of it. It might not be under this administration, but don't forget also that it is the same military. You know, military, the military remains the same. That is the same military. That will continue the job, uh, but of course, like uh, Akuza said, leadership is, is key. Leadership is key. So, and um, back to the question the lady asked, and uh, uh, you know, we've heard about you say the locals uh, who is causing the, all that, you know, all those uh, sorry they told us. Well, I don't know how that. I don't know the truth about that because if um, if I'm in, in, if I'm in government and I have idea who is causing this problem, I will not stop at anything until I get those guys, you know. Uh, exterminated or arrested or prosecuted, you know. So telling us that you know them and they are not getting them out, uh, to me, is neither here nor that. And that is why I don't trust that particular, uh, um, you know, I don't, I don't really have a, a, a very huge respect for that, for that uh, Office of the National Security Advisor now, because uh, if you say you know who is causing all or causing all that, you, and you, can, you have not done anything about it, how does that uh, add to our, our decision? So to me, uh, look, madam, don't play with intelligence. Intelligence is important in this issue. You cannot look down on it. If you if if we get our intelligence asset right, look. Uh, Mr. Chidi, I, I I totally I totally understand with you, but I'm still also trying to understand how intelligence gathering is stopping the president from naming. I mean, the National Assembly has said you you need to name this person's terrorists bandits and that has not happened i'm wondering why intelligence is also a problem why we have not arrested those who are sponsoring this element it seemed that we're okay, in conversation you, over time uh, we have had several deniers that we're not paying i mean we're not paying ransom for the exchange so far statistic has it that you have about 1440 students that have been kidnapped from the northern part of nigeria with 25 schools attacked 
So I'm still also wondering how intelligence, with all of the information that we have, we know the people who are perpetrating this evil, and no one has been arrested, no one has been prosecuted, but rather we have persons who have been, who we have said, oh yes, it's okay to receive all of the pardon and come through, let's integrate you into the society. So um, um, I'm sure that a lot of persons are also, would also be questioning, you know, how intelligence, not to say that intelligence gathering is not important in the fight against insecurity, but we have seen a situation where we are in the know, we have the information, but we're not acting. We're not doing what we should do. And then we have all of the bodies that are, you know, saddled with the responsibility of executing and prosecuting those involved. So it feels like we're just um, treating some of these issues with kid gloves. And the issue of, you know, in, you know I mean, in, in different parts of the country, you want to talk about the South is the issues are quite different and not the same with what you have, um, you know, in, in the northern part of Nigeria. So, um, all of that, would you still see, say that that's an issue or a concern of intelligence? Well, I don't know. If you, uh, look, I, I am not, you are right to an extent. Uh, what I'm trying to say is that, um, I, no, look, of course you know that I, I will not know who to for uh, anybody. But probably they have not been able to tell us the, the, this culprits because maybe the investigation is going, or still going on to, to make sure they get all, of, all, all the people involved. Because if you mention them immediately, it might, it might um, uh, you know, uh, impact on the investigative process. But that's, that's my thinking. But that is not to say that they've done a wrong war. Look, you are very right to an extent. Because if you look at it, we have seen uh, you know, the government telling us how, remember those guys that arrested in, uh, I think, Dubai, right? About 60 people there about, you know, and they said they were prosecuting them because they were sponsoring Boko Haram. The, we have heard also a, a number of uh, you know you know uh, revelations in terms of who and where they are coming from. But what Nigerians are looking at now is how do we get our lives back? And um, I, I I do not really want to get involved in all these politics. Uh, you know, of, 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 what, what is important to me is how do we get out of this situation right now? The, the only way we can get out of this situation is to keep talking about it, to, be, to bring forth ideas that can help. It's all all right. But important thing also, uh, what is lacking is the political will to even, um, you know, bring to life those ideas we're bringing them forth. So I, I expect that uh, the government should have that political will, that strength, that, you know, conviction to go deep and then, you know, arrest those who are supposed to be arrested and prosecute those who are supposed to be prosecuted. So going around the issues of it, uh, we, you, you, it's neither here nor there. So I, I agree with you to an extent, and I believe that I hope the government, the people concerned, are listening to us to know that look, Nigerians are not Nigerians see what is happening, and they are not happy, and they expect that uh, as we are going into 2022, that things a lot, a lot, a lot will go better because we can't continue in this trajectory and go. All right, all right, Mr. Major. You also get so you also get so. Let's bring you back in. Um, you know, and I'm, I'm going to take you back to a question that I asked earlier, and that is if six years should really be enough. Uh, to see a difference, and maybe not a difference with immediate, um, an immediate end to insurgency, but at least see a difference in the processes with, with which we uh, conduct um, um, our security um, uh, in Nigeria. Should six years be enough to see better investments in intelligence, to see better investments in the armed forces, in the policing structure, in security you know, st structure in general? Um, um, and of course, if if what would you have expected to be the very first steps that the current administration should have taken if they were actually serious about um, fixing Nigeria's security challenges? Well, uh, let me first of all start by correcting my sister that uh, bandits have not been declared as a um, terrorist. Uh, bandits have been declared as a terrorist by Buhari administration government recently in about three weeks ago. And um, the question is, it's <coughs> not about declaring them terrorists or not declaring them terrorists. Uh, whether they are declared terrorists or they are not declared they are terrorists because they are violating the, the action, uh, the, the, the constitution as well as the uh, kind of um, uh, what is expected. So going into your, your question, let me tell you, six years, going by the inputs made by Buhari administration into the security. Like I keep saying, I commend them uh, in the respect to the amount of money imputed in, 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 in security. Looking at the 2015 
2016 budget, 2017, 18, 19, and up to. You know, when I heard about the uh, uh, Muhammad Bari mentioning the amount he went, he, he went, he budgeted for 2022. My basic assumption was that maybe he is going to take us into the moon tight so that Nigerians will be moved out of uh, the present territory to another, to extent of a uh, moon site uh, so that uh, uh, we will be there, will be straight there. So the fact is that uh, if at all there is seriousness, if at all Buhari government is honest, if at all there is sincerity in purpose, if at all there is commitment, passion, and patriotism, and if at all they were not in the government on seat of the power to deceive Nigerians, not even six years, even three, even within three years, or even less than that, if there is commitment, if there is passion, and if there is true practical, political, and administrative will, they could have changed the narrative even within a number of couple of months, not even to talk of the six, six years. So their six years is a wasted period. Their six years is a disappointment, disgrace. Uh, I want to tell you that uh, what in, in, in 2022, there is nothing they can do. Uh, because all this uh, saying that we have procured uh, uh, Tokano, we have procured uh, this jet, we have procured this armament, this and that, have you forgotten that, that it was the same national security advisor came out through a, a statement credited to him through BBC House, and he made mention very clear that huge amount of money have been budgeted and released for the purpose of security, a purchase of armament and improving uh, the security situation. But he don't know as a chief of army staff. That is an insult. He's supposed to have resigned by making such a statement. And uh, if you look at the statement also credited to Lai Mohammed, credited to what is credited recently to the, to the, the Attorney General of the, Fed, of the Federation, that is Sam Alami, and what is credited to Lai Mohammed, and even what is credited to, to comes through Garba Show and Adesina. This government is supposed to have gone home. They're supposed to have resigned because they have wasted Nigerians' time. They have wasted our resources, and there is no nothing like a result. So I want to tell you that... Uh, what I expect uh, uh, from them in the year 2022 is probably, probably, if they could be serious, is to sustain the tempo, uh, probably to stop the number of attacks. But I want to tell you that the attacks is still ongoing in all part of all part of all these regions. What will uh, make you laugh is the fact that you know I'm a practical investigator. Because I go to these locations. There is nowhere where this criminality is happening in northern Nigeria, in the northeast, north, north central, in the south, <coughs> south, and south, south, that I didn't step in. I step in and I have seen practical. So let me tell you, within every 15 kilometer radius to 25 kilometer radius in all parts of the northern Nigeria, there is a presence of uh, a commanding units, uh, there is a military unit. And within every 20 to 30 kilometers, there is a divisional police office. Within every 30 to 35 kilometers, there is a formation of the DSS. Within every 15 to 25 kilometers, there is a formation of either custom, civil defense, immigration, as well as the, uh, uh, the other intelligence, other law enforcement agents. So I, I wonder how comes, how comes these criminals can move in hundreds 300 uh, motorbike, motorcycles, 400, 500, 60, 100, 150, carrying three, three people in each of the motorbike and carrying AK-47 and AK-49 and other armament, RPG, PMD, and other sophisticated ammunition. And they move freely to go and conduct their activity and move back. Let me tell you, if you have only 20 uh, motorbikes moving in a desert area, or in, in, in a more cloud, in a more area that is not tight, definitely you will see the dust. So that dust is enough to send a message to that military formation within 20 to 25 kilometer radius that there is a, an attempt to make an, 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 an attack. And at the same time, you may mention that you know who are the financiers. Why can't you prosecute or execute or silently use your intelligence here to eliminate them? or start eliminating some of them, or executing them in public, so that it will serve as a deterrence. Which means that probably you are the financiers of all these activities. 
If you are not, why are you having the list and you cannot e expose the list? Why are you having the knowledge of who are the financiers and you cannot take action against them? Why are you killing innocent? Why are you sending our military where they are not supposed to be? Why can't you uh, recruit more hands in the police? Let me tell you, if at all the government can recruit 40 youths between the age of 17 and 22 from each polling unit, if the uh, award have 10 polling units, you will have 400. If a local government have uh, uh, 10 political wards, you are going to have 4,000 news between the age of 14, uh, 17, I mean, to 22, so that you can you can push them into the police, so that the police who are supposed to be the first respondent will have the capability, will have the ability. I want to tell you that some of the guns that Nigerian police are carrying have aged their parents. It means that it has been there since independence or even before independence. So when you don't have armaments, and the question is, all the, into the input made, yes, of course, uh, uh, you have made the, the input. We have seen that. We see that we have seen the budget. We have tracked the budget. We, have we are monitoring the budget. We are monitoring the release of uh, uh, budgetary allocated for security, intelligence, and other activities. But the question is, why are we seeing the result we are seeing is only the fact that the, the, the security personnel have only been rich, the richer, the richer and richer. And nobody is checking that. So what, what, and why is, the, is, is it that you cannot use those inputs you made in managing and attending and addressing the intelligence issue? And I want to tell you that every, every month there used to be a, a security meeting at the local government, local government monthly security meeting. So if you're having these meetings and yet there is no result, and this meeting is involving the traditional rulers from the, the, the bottom to the top level of the local government, that is from the ward head to, to, to from the community head or from the ward head, from the, the district head, the village head, and involving the, the chief security officers, chief security officer of the local government, that is the local government administrator, if at all we have local government. Because as far as I'm concerned, the local government administration has been scrapped by Muhammad Bahar administration. If not formally, you are... Mr. Getso, can you hear us? Actions have demonstrated and I that from what we have, from what we have on ground, there is nothing like local government. So why that meeting is, the aim and objective of that meeting is to have intelligence uh, uh, information generated <coughs> be shared with the state command, that is the DSS command, the police command, the Navy command, the Air Force command, and the general overseer of the a, a national security is a national security advisor who's supposed to have written a number of memos, uh, briefing the Mr. President about ABCD and providing necessary recommendations, and at the same time, give instructions to the Navy, to the Air Force, that uh, go and do this, go and do this. And let me tell you, uh, the final, before just before I go, that all these bandits, all these kidnappers, we said, and I said, and I'm repeating myself, there is nobody, they are not foreigners, one, I'm dis, I'm, I'm, I disagree that they are foreigners, they are Nigerian nationals. We know them, we know where they are, we know their parents, we know their locations, they are living within us, they are attacking us, and there is no member of the, of the state or National Assembly or Senate that will tell me that in his constituency or in our constituency, he or she don't know where these criminals are. We know their locations. So why are you beating around the bush? Why can't you go and deal with them decisively so that we go, uh, we, we finish this issue, and we, we will stop wasting resources? The money you have imputed into the security and intelligence management have not in any way uh, moved Nigeria from where we were before to where we're supposed to be. Uh, we, when we move from worst, from prime fun to fair, so there is no result. Uh, only government wasted its time in the last six years, and we cannot and we are not ready to give any to give them any iota of uh, benefit of doubt that in 2022 they are right. going to do any, uh, yeah, anything. So. Are they going to perform miracles, or what do you expect them to do? They are not going to do anything. They should get themselves ready to go get out of the system, so that we, we Nigerians, I advocate and call for Nigerians to walk hand in hand. Forget about your differences. 
and let's send you our differences and work together to ensure that you send Buhari administration and uh, uh, their allies out of the system of governance uh, so that they will not even return around and um, uh, let's bring uh, more uh, right, uh, right, people that to hold on. confidence and trust on to manage the security, to manage the intelligence and ensure that necessary right. practical investment. Mr. Gatso, kindly hold on. Uh, Chidi Omeja, uh, would you agree, you know, that we are really just coasting until 2023 uh, to, of course, you know, change, you know, see a change in government, you know, and there's really not much that will be achieved security-wise uh, between now and the end of the current administration's tenure? I don't, I don't believe that uh, the, between now and 2023, uh, President Mohamed Buhari's administration is going to achieve anything. Right, Mr. Uh, Mr. Getso, is, Mr. Getso, hold on. They have moved their faith. Mr. Kindly hold on, Mr. Getso. Um, I, I, I want to um, chill your major to quickly respond to that. Sorry? Oh, well, um, Mr. Omeja, kindly go on. Yes, please. Okay, so now, well, I, I do not believe that... Um, you know, we can get anything very substantial between now and when this government leaves. But I believe that uh, the best the government could do for us is to, just like I have said, to ensure that we, we maintain the, the momentum. We maintain the, we, we reduce the number of attacks. We, um, we, we, we plow more into, uh, into our intelligence assets. Because, you see, having, look, what boot, a lot of boots on the ground cannot even do the job. There's what they call kinetic and non-kinetic approach to these things. When we say non-kinetic, it means, you know, looking at other areas. How, what, what are the, what are the root causes of this? What are the issues that are exacerbating this problem? What are the, what are the challenges? What are, how do we, you know, how do we uh, ensure that these guys do not have recruitment? You know, so, this, so we have to look at all these things. You see, look, I understand uh, Yahuza a lot. I get his sentiment. I understand his emotion. And every Nigerian, you know, uh, have the right to express kind of emotion now and see what is happening. You see, we need to really understand how things have really gone bad. So it's not something you can just say, look, why don't we do this and then get rid of them? We cannot get rid of them in, 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 with a slight no hand. It's going to be systematic. It's going to take a lot of time now. Things have gone or, or, or right already. Things have gone bad. The only thing to do now is to, how do we minimize incident? How do we mitigate the yeah, 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 attack? How do we ensure that we don't have what, many more youths being enrolled into these into this odious groups? And, and again, I don't agree with him when he said that the entire, you know, strength of these uh, bandits in the Northwest are, are Nigerians. We know we, we know that we have a very weak, uh, you know, uh, border, uh, you know, stuff, and that we know that uh, a lot of uh, some of the I'm just seeing the people that are arrested, see the Nigerians, see Chadians, see people from from. from from different parts of the of West Africa coming in because we have a very bad, um, you know, uh, uh, border uh, stuff. So I, I agree. I want to I, I want to say that the, the, the challenge is more than you think. The challenge is more than is is more is not as simplistic as we are trying to put it because you have a cross border banditry happening. You have people. We have uh, so so many so many or so much ungoverned spaces. Not so much big places that you cannot look. Even if you have um, police checkpoint or uh, military checkpoint, in, you know, every, every other bit has. What about the, 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 the what about the, the forest, the ungoverned spaces where these guys launch attack from? They don't attack mostly on the express. They go to the villages. How do, are we, do we have enough boot on ground to cover the villages? We don't have. So now I'm trying to say that what we need now is to see how we can make use of our non kinetic issues and approach. To deal with this matter. Because oh, oh, okay, Chidi Omeji, uh, uh, let's just quickly, for the want of time, because we're coasting down, I mean, in no time we're going to call it uh, a wrap. But let's just also, let, let, let's quickly uh, move to um, Yawo Zuzo Getso. And uh, I'd like to share your thoughts on this. The Nigerian police will be getting an upward review uh, come 2022, 20%. 20 and according to the government, this is in response to the hashtag answers, I mean, some of the demand of uh, the hashtag answers protest or protesters. Now, um, according to, you know, this particular policy direction and action, whether or not there will be implementation, it's also another issue. But uh, the fact that uh, it's been stated that this would help in the performance and, you know, the function of the Nigerian police. Uh, I'd like to share your thoughts on that. Do you see us have, you know, uh, 
a fantastic police force come 2022 with this upward review? Well, I, I commend Buhari government for making the review for the Nigerian police. But I want to tell you, and I am very optimistic, if I'm alive and you are alive, uh, God's willing, by 20, December 2022, we will come back and uh, revisit this subject. Nothing will change as far as the police, uh, Nigerian police I know is concerned. Uh, that it will not vote or change their attitude. The issue is reorientation of the cycle the, the, the cycle and the system and operating system of the uh, uh, Nigerian police. You know, we're just talking about them extorting money from uh, people in Abuja. I traveled yesterday for 13 hours. And from where I moved to where I am talking to you now, uh, that uh, I, 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 I want to tell you, I have seen around uh, about uh, eight check police checkpoints. And in all these checkpoints, they were just extorting money from the the, the drivers who are moving to, to the markets or the commuters who are moving around. They are not checking anything. So it is the orientation, it is the psychology that needs to be changed. Uh, I, uh, I will commend the Nigerian police leadership if they can sit back and also relax and think about how to change the reorientation of the psychology of the common police officer uh, or uh, constable police to, to the inspector general of police. Because it's something that cut across all the system of the Nigerian police. More than 90% of the people, uh, of the person, uh, personnel in the Nigerian police force are, 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 are rotten. They have that ideology of extorting money, collecting money for bail, collecting money for this, unnecessary A, B, C, D. And yet, ordinarily, if you go to lodge a complaint at the police station, either outfort or divisional police station, or sometimes even at the state command, they will ask you to go and buy a paper and pen. Sometimes, in many cases, they don't even have an ordinary paper. So why is the money being budgeted for stationery and other things? Which means that it is a psychology that needs to be changed. I commend the government for uh, reviewing the, the, the salary upward and listening to the answers and what may be. But I want to tell you, we are coming back, myself and you, in this same uh, station to discuss in December 2022 to make a review what is the impact of reviewing the, uh, the, the police uh, welfare or salary upward as far as the effect on that the, and impact in 2022 between January or between the time of implementation to the end time. And I want to tell you, even before they get this upward, upward re reviewed money, it may also take us up to April or May or so and wait and see. I'm going to ask you to check uh, in, in, in February, in March, in April to see that if really it is uh, affected right, into, uh, into practice. Because I know it's the system. All right, Mr. Getso, um, we, you know, appreciate your time this morning. Thank you very much uh, for being with us and for speaking with us. Uh, Chidi Omeje, also, thank you very much for your time and for sharing your thoughts with us. With thank you for me. It's been a great pleasure. Um, very, very important issues. Uh, we wish you both thank a very beautiful day ahead. Thank you. Well, that's the much we can take at this point in time. We appreciate your time. Definitely come through tomorrow with the show. And the time again is 7 o'clock. If you missed out on any part of the conversation, it's all right to follow us on Facebook and Instagram. We're at Plus TV Africa. And YouTube is at Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. Do well to subscribe. I am Messi Bopo. To have a great day.